It gives you that fire, that motivation to want to leave that, to want to be that rich person in the Range Rover rather than the person pouring the coffee. That was the sort of mindset I had. A lot of people associate me with, with certain things. I've got big chest, right? So I can move ridiculous weight on, on, a, on a chest press, you know, 70 kilo dumbbells. A lot of people have been coming up to me and go, yeah, you're off TikTok, you do the 70 kilo dumbbells. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And imagine you just coming in like, and your dad's like, look, I want you to go and pursue politics in London. You're like, dad, I'm going like, to... I'm gonna create some videos, like, yeah. and he's like, you what? They just don't understand, like, just parents just don't understand. Yeah, a, a, how, why people are making all these videos, and B, the money you can earn from social media is astronomical. It's it's ridiculous. If you told me I was, a year ago, I would be earning the money that I'm earning now, even with Gymshark, living this life I'm living now, I would've laughed in your face. So today, we are joined by Will Bailey, online coach and fitness content creator, mate. This, to be fair, I've been excited to do this one. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long time coming. Mate, first and foremost, how are you doing? Good, very good. Um, recovering from this injury, had a few days off the gym, so I've been a bit demotivated. But going back after this, I'm I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. So obviously, for people who don't know who you are, mm. um, you're a sponsored athlete by Gymshark. Mm -hmm. But obviously, your fitness journey. You're 23, is that right? Yeah, 23 year old. How long you been training for? So, like specifically weight training and in the gym training, 14. But like sports and and general body conditioning, like eight years old. So. Um, I started doing martial arts when I was eight, um, got my black belt when I was 12. So that was my first sort of four years of body conditioning, you know, all the classic press ups, sit ups, building a good foundation. Um, and then, yeah, that's that martial arts sort of transitioned into weightlifting. You know, you want to build your chest, build your arms, impress all the girls. That, that was the sort of thought process behind it all. So all throughout school, go to school, eight till, eight till four, whatever, come back, have food, go to the gym. That was my, that was my life during five years of school. Continued it into college. Um, yeah, and that's that's where it sort of took off. So when did you start taking things seriously? I know you said you co obviously continued it in the college mm. and stuff, but not every young lad at that age is yeah. training. I yeah, mean, yeah. for me, certainly, when I got introduced to the gym, I was I was in my 20s, mate. Yeah. But I know a lot of people, when I was in sort of school and stuff, there was the odd kid who trained and he had bigger arms than the rest of the lads. But other than that, it wasn't really anything more serious. What do you think you took it more serious for? So... 14 especially, I decided I wanted to join the military, uh, specifically the Royal Marines. Um, you know, my dad was in the military, so I always had that sort of competitive side in me. I want to be like him, if not be better than him. Uh, he was in the army, so I thought the Marines was like one up, trying to trying to one up him. Um, so yeah, basically all my training from a young age was, was focused towards that. Um, being as fit as possible, being able to do as many press-ups, as pull-ups, sit-ups as I could, being able to run as far as I could, as fast as I could. Um, yeah, ultimately joined the Marines at 16 years old um, and you know it was it was from there I, I left the Marines after about a year and then I that's when I started to take the bodybuilding seriously to, to get me to where I am today. Do you think you joined the Marines to kind of impress your dad? Yeah I, I definitely think that he was a strict dad like mm -hmm. he everything he wanted me to do I always wanted to say no but he didn't give me the option to say no which in hindsight I'm thankful for um, because, you know, I, I wouldn't have done martial arts. I wouldn't have I played music to a high level. I wouldn't have joined the Marines. So so that sort of push from him has really helped me to be the person I am today. So I, I am thankful for that, even though at the time I absolutely hated him for it. Um, but yeah, that, that was the sort of, I was just so so set on on joining the Marines at, at that young age. That, that was what everything in my life was was focused towards. Did you have siblings as well? Yeah, two younger brothers. And was, was your dad the same with them no, as well? No, no, no so much, you... much less strict on them. And it sounds it sounds horrible to say but you, you can sort of tell the mm -hmm. way I am and the, the way they are now there's a big contrast mm -hmm. um you know in terms of everything like they so we're, we're all naturally skinny we're quite a skinny family but I'm obviously I've, I've got built my muscle now they're you know still just skin and bone I look at them and I'm like oh, if, I, if I didn't if my dad didn't make me do that that's that's what I'd look like now kind of thing yeah did you think he regrets not pushing them how he pushed you um Potentially, um, I don't know. I, 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 you, you obviously have to ask him, but yeah, I think he's he's happy that he he pushed me so hard to mm -hmm. to become who I am now. How was your mother? Did she play much of a role? She played on? a big role as well. Again, quite strict on me, reinforcing what everything that dad would say. You know, go to this, do your homework, go to martial arts, go to training, do this. Um, yeah, and then obviously as the other two were getting older, they they just got less strict on the middle one, and then even less strict on the younger one, and and yeah. You know what's mad? The reason I ask you this is because I'm trying to get a bit of an understanding as well for the viewers and listeners. Mm -hmm. Like, because obviously you're popular, certainly on social media now. Uh, a lot of people know who you are. Your following's, you know, it's grown out of nowhere. You're on YouTube. You're pretty much everywhere now. Mm -hmm. TikTok, you, you, yeah. you're sort of taking over. Um, and which I want to get onto kind of where you're at now in your life. But 
were you always popular growing up as well or was that something that you're only popular for online yeah in school so so school for me was i loved it like i, I the day i left school i was bawling i was i was crying my eyes out like i was worried I would, man. yeah yeah I was, I was worried i would never see my friends ever again it was it was a it was a good time for me um there was like five of us in the in the popular group if, if you want to say um yeah so we all played sports it was a rugby school so we were all rugby players we were all we all had that really tight bond um, so yeah, school, school was a good time. We, I'd say relatively popular growing up, bit of a joker, bit of a class clown, but that's that's how it was, yeah. So when you did fi- finally lose, like leave school, sorry, yeah. did, were, you, were you absolutely like, I know you said you were good at obviously yeah. leaving and stuff, yeah, but yeah. did you stay in touch with them people? Do you know what, I didn't. And, and that, you know? that's the sad thing. Like w- I tried to, you know, the summer you left school, you, you would still meet up and stuff like that, but everyone goes to different colleges, sixth forms. Um, and I was just, when I was young, I was so bad at keeping in touch with people. Um, even like now, obviously now I'm super, super busy. So it's hard to, um, to, to relight those fires, as you say. But yeah, I, I don't actually speak to anybody from school anymore, which is sad to say, but. Do you know what's crazy, mate? Like for me, it's, it's, it feels like a million years away yeah. since I was at school yeah, when I left yeah. when I was 16. I'm 33, you know, right? So I'm older now. But um, you're only 23 and you've only been left school like five years or something, yeah. which is mad to mm. think five years ago, like. I just, in fact, five years ago, mate, I started the content PT business. Yeah. So that's how mad it is. You were in school when I started doing yeah. what I'm still doing now, which mm. is makes me feel a little bit sad, but also yeah. kind of buzz off that a little yeah. bit. Um, when you, obviously, you, you've took things seriously with your body meal. I mean, again, for, for listeners who can't see Will, he's an unbelievable Nick. Thank I've you, seen man. you cutting around the gyms. I know yeah, what you're like. Yeah. I've seen you top off. I've seen you yeah. you're going for it in the mirrors and stuff. But like, where did that come from, from the aesthetic point of view? Obviously, your martial arts. Mm. Obviously, you were, you were in the Marines. You yeah. were kind of dedicated. And all of them different industries or kind of um, avenues, if you like, all require looking you know, a certain way because of your fitness. When did you start actually thinking, do you know what, I want to physically look good? What's happening, guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you are, please hit that like, hit the subscribe button, and press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. I think um, fitness YouTube was a big thing for me. So like I said before the podcast, Matt Does Fitness especially was a, is a big... Um, name that I looked up to in the fitness industry and not only for the way he looked because he he's got a crazy physique you know arms huge chest lean all year round and um, so that was really what I, I sort of aspired to look like and um, so yeah so that's when I really started gearing all my training towards the aesthetic look the the being big but being lean but being strong at the same time and um, yeah so it was definitely fitness YouTube that, that got me into that mindset. And did you want to start YouTube straight away as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I actually did. So w- when I was at college, I, I, I started filming a, f- a few YouTube videos. You know, the first one I ever filmed, it was on my iPhone and I filmed it all vertical. So half the screen was black and made all, all sorts of mistakes. But yeah, I, I did try. I, I stopped for a long time because I, I think I posted three and I expected a million views by then and obviously never got them. Um, mm-hmm. And then only picked, only picked up YouTube again within the last year or so and then now it started to, to do okay what made you kind of quit after you know you said you you thought you were going to get a million views and you didn't yeah. did you get any stick or anything like that because obviously yeah. when people are starting youtube i know certainly in my circle of friends mm-hmm. right for for argument's sake i was the only one out of or everyone who i know to pick up a camera mm-hmm. and then go on to create a business out of it but when i, I remember when I, I mean i've been filming for 14 years mate when i remember i first started in music so i was traveling down to london filming musicians and stuff like that and people used to take the piss mate something rotten they were like what well, ads is going down to london again he's on trains he's waiting outside of record labels he's trying to film rappers in the streets yeah, yeah. all that type of shit but at the same time i kind of knew there was something in us and i was like but i want to make this a thing regardless if if i can i want to make it a thing mm-hmm. Is that something that you want to do with obviously youtube because i know myself how hard it is to grow a channel for you, I mean, what what what's your how big's your channel at the minute? Uh, it's almost ten thousand subscribers. Ten k. So, so yeah. even that in itself, I know it's an absolute slog, and yeah. you don't make money from YouTube really. So let's just face it: in the early days, yeah. you don't. So like for it, you, it, it's a hobby. Yeah. What yeah. is the reason you keep doing that and keep you know throwing yourself out you know out there? I, again, I, I put it down to fitness YouTube, like seeing how well these other guys have done, how quickly they've grown. Obviously, the money they're making that, that's a huge factor. You know, I, I'd love to be at the point where I had. A million subscribers and I was making thousands per video like that's ultimately the the, the dream right but um it's also just general exposure to, to the fitness industry to the fitness industry as well just trying to get my name out there um through Instagram YouTube and TikTok as well um YouTube is definitely the one I give the least attention to because it's sort of most effort and least reward um mm-hmm. so that's that's often quite on the back burner I think that's that's the case for a lot of people in the fitness industry unless you've got x number of followers um yeah so your your instagram following as well that's blown up um from your was that always a thing where you were like actually i posted a topless picture and i realized that i was getting a lot of attention or was it a case of 
you know, this is still a slog, like. I still feel like it's a slog today. Like, I've got all my other friends in the fitness industry, like my two closest friends especially, they've got hundreds of thousands on Instagram. But Instagram for me, even though it's doing good, like it's growing, it's nowhere near the level I, I either want it to be or it should be. Um, it's gone It's gone up a lot recently because I've had a lot of exposure recently. But um, yeah, I think it's what, nearly 26,000 followers, which is obviously a good number. Like, mm -hmm. it's a very respectful number, but I, I want so much more than that. How long has it taken you to get to 26k? Um, yeah, so so I started the whole fitness thing when I left university, which was last summer. So I've been doing it just over a year now. I think when I left university, I had three thousand, maybe. So it's it's been a long, like I said, long slog to get twenty three thousand followers. Um, and it's it's TikTok mainly that's helped me with that. Growing my TikTok following so big is is transferred a lot over to Instagram. It's just trying to keep that transfer going and and growing Instagram organically on its own as well. Do you ever feel a bit anxious about the things that you put out on social media? Because I know, again, you're putting your body out there, you're putting your image out there, your personality, which which is great, by the way. You have, you, you can tell you're a nice lad anyway, yeah. but in terms of like, actually, because I know myself, I've done, I've done it for years, so I know it's it's quite daunting to, to mm. take that step. And I think it requires a certain type of person. It's definitely not for everybody. Yeah. What is it in you that makes you just think, is it the... I can do whatever I want attitude or yeah. is it like a bit like actually I do feel shit it's, when I post but it, it's definitely that now I can do what I want attitude because I've got the platform and because I'm over the the anxiety of it but definitely when I started like 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 you said before friends would used to you know rip me to shreds about mm -hmm. posting these fitness videos oh you do, you want to be like Mattress Fitness you want to be an influencer blah 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 um so so the anxiety was was very high when I started posting and I was very conscious of what I was posting um but now you've seen the kind of videos I post. I'm, I go in the gym, I, I say whatever I want, I do whatever I want. I, I do not care who's looking at me because it, it's got me to where I am today. So I'm just continuing that. If So for someone watching this, Will, and really wants to grow the following, what do you think that they could be doing? Like, is, is it literally just like, is it as cliche as just be yourself? Yeah. Or is it a case of, no, no, you actually need to strategically plan what you want to do and when you want to do it and how often you've got to post and all that stuff? Yeah, the, the, there is... There is a few things you can do, but the, the absolute one thing I tell to everybody who messages me, everybody who DMs me, asks me, comes up to me in the gym, is personality. Like, you, you, If you don't have a personality, if you can't engage an audience that you're, you're not going to get anywhere, you could look 10 out of 10 and you could you know, be the best looking person in the world. But if you don't have the personality or you can't crack a joke alongside that, it's, it's going to be very hard to monetize that, which is obviously the, the thing that everybody wants to do. And obviously you look... If, if your personality is as flat as a doorknob or mm. whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, is that even a thing? No, flat as a fucking doorknob? I'm saying any of But if it is, like, how, how how appealing do you look to brands? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if your personality is out there, because there's kind of layers to it, isn't there? Mm. Well, actually, we can put them on brands. Yeah, we, we know his image, but mm. everyone knows the image of yeah. a photograph. But once you start speaking up, people can then sort of place you yeah. in positions for sponsorship, etc. For you, I know you've had a few different sponsorships. And I want to talk about that, but what was your first kind of introduction? To, actually, do you know what? This Instagram thing, the TikTok thing, the YouTube thing, I can actually make a few quid out of this now. Do you know what it was? So it's a funny story. So it was my friends, Sam and James, I'm not sure if you know who they are, um, who I met at university and they really got me back into the fitness thing and to, and to start posting and being active. And the first thing that me and Sam did was, we, we, I can't remember what it was called. It was this company that basically, because we had decent TikTok followings, maybe 100, 150,000 at that point, um, it was a company that would basically get us to advertise these apps and for every video we post it would be like 50 pounds and to us as students you know if we could post four videos a week and get 200 pounds yeah, a week yeah, we course. were like wow good like money, this man, is good money yeah. yeah um so that was def that was the first time i was like wow i can make good money off tiktok as a, as a broke student um and then yeah vanquish was the first big name sponsor that came along it wasn't a paid one it was just a, a gifted basis but um that started to open up my eyes, like, right, right. If, if a company like Vanquish is, has seen me and they and they want to send me things, like, where, where could Did this Did you go? know who Vanquish were when they reached yeah, yeah, out to yeah, you? Yeah. So what was the process? Now, again, for someone who literally hasn't got a clue about the industry, how does someone get sponsored off the back of Instagram? So, because I was posting so consistently on TikTok, like I said, TikTok is my biggest platform by far. Um, posting videos, I would actually wear Vanquish products and, and tag them as well. And I don't know how long I did it for. It probably weeks if not months and until somebody eventually recognized that and they sent me a, a instagram dm and was like yo like we've seen your videos we love them we'd love to send you a few things for you to promote and i was like i couldn't believe it i was like wow like sat in my university bedroom like thank you're gonna send me clothes for free like it's crazy do you how do your mates react to it like when you're getting the attention and because obviously normally right so you go to university you're going to end up in a some kind of job career path whatever and again if you're happy with that brilliant 
But when they're kind of looking at someone like yourself, thinking he's getting free clobber, he's probably going to make a few quid here, his Instagram's good. Do they kind of get a little bit envious? Do they kind of get, I want a bit of what Will's doing? Or does it happen where you're like, look, this is my lane, just whatever? Like, Do, do you know what it was? So I went to Loughborough University, right, which is the number one sports uni. So everybody who was there is either a top-level athlete or they're, or they're somehow in the fitness industry themselves. So it was actually quite the norm at my university. So it was a, it was more of a tap on the shoulder than like a, oh, I'm jealous of him. Yeah, of course. Where, where it sort of got to me is because I was start, I started so late. Like a lot of these guys who are big in the fitness industry now were, were like locked down. They blew up over lockdown, right? Where, and I, where I wasn't posting there. Um, so they were already like three or four steps ahead of me. So they might've already had a Gymshark deal. They might've already been with my protein, big supplement sponsors. So for me, it was like a, okay, good, but I want more. Yeah, of course. And who, when that was kind of happening and you were starting to feel that, you know, the pull from different brands and stuff. Did you think, right, I'm in with Vanquish. What I need to do now is kind of leverage this. Or were you like, no, I'm happy where I'm at. Like how, did the did the kind of hunger grow inside you? Yeah. Once I saw that a brand of that size would do something like that for me, I was like, right, that's just adding adding fuel to the fire. I'm going to post even more. I'm going to be even more consistent. I'm going to make the quality better, the, the quantity better, everything like that. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm here today. Has it opened up your eyes? to kind of the normal nine to five scenario as well. Like how how do you view, I don't mean the people who do those jobs, but how do you view that as a lifestyle? So so yeah, I've, I've had a number amount of jobs before doing what I'm doing now. You know, I used to work at Costa, for, Costa Coffee. I was in the Marines. I was a paper boy. I used to work at this gym that we're in now. Um, and the more of those types of jobs I did, the l- less I wanted to do them. So I was working at Costa while I was at university as well. So I would be a full-time student. I would be doing 40, 50 hours a week at Costa Coffee as well. And it, it was soul destroying, like pouring coffees every single day for rich people in Range Rovers is like not the lifestyle I wanted to live. And whether doing it at Costa Coffee or sitting at a desk nine to five doing the same hours, I was like, this, this isn't for me. Do you know what I think? Just listening to you, I think you're made for it, like this type of stuff, because like, I'm not saying you sound, well, I am, I'm saying you sound scripted. You sound, you almost sound scripted right. in, in, in a, and that's a compliment. Mm. Like rich people in Range Rover, never even heard yeah, of that yeah, put yeah. together in that way, but that's so right when you, when you are serving those people and it's sort of going round mm. and round and latter, try it, latter. It, it, latter. it gives you that fire, that motivation to want to leave that, to want to be that rich person in the Range Rover rather than the person pouring the coffee. That was the sort of mindset I had while it was going on. Do you know what, mate? I know that feeling too well because, again, I've worked in umpteen jobs, mate, probably 20-odd jobs, mate. I've worked at Nissan. I've worked for Asda. I've worked at Carphone Wear. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been all to uni, it. got me yeah. degree, did all that type of stuff. But I remember me partner, like now, Abby, she, she said to us, she was like, you know what? She said, what's... Because cla- I used to beat myself up a little bit when... when Because I've had other businesses before this and they weren't always going well. I used to be like, actually, do you know what? Like, I just know I want to I want to really boom and, and do something with yeah. business. But I kind of knew I had a skill set with, you know, creating content for people and all that type of stuff. But I was like, how do I actually monetize this? So I had a marketing company before the content PT. And um, I used to be like, you know what? Maybe I should just get a job. And she was like, no, because by doing all the jobs that you think you failed at and walked out of, you know what you don't want to do. Yeah. And I was like, actually, that's the fucking shit. That's exactly. the credit, do you know exactly. what I mean? And and I think that's really important. Like, I would always say, like, people need to fail a yeah. shitload of times. And I have done that in business. Yeah. People have probably heard that before who's in the business world. Like, failure is winning. You yeah. can't win without yeah. doing that. So for you on social media, because would you say that's kind of that's been an eye-opener for you in terms of perseverance because not every photo is going to get you a vanquish deal. Yeah, um, it, it, it is proof that consistency pays off. Like, so you can't post one video and expect Gymshark to knock on your door. Like, it's just not how it works. If you, you have to be consistent with it. You have to be, like I said, you have to show your personality. You, you, there's so many boxes you have to tick in order to, to grow the following, to grow a fan base, to, to, to get the engagement. And that's when the opportunities come. That's when the doors start opening. How cheeky are you with, your position, your platform. Do you ever like, well, I'm going to use this. Like actually I'm booking a hotel in, in Santa Rini. So you know what? Uh, do you want to check me following before I uh, book a room? Um, no, I'm, I'm not like, I'm, I'm very grounded in that respect. Like I know that I've, I've built a following, but I also know that there are other people in the industry that just completely put me to shame. Right. So my, my friends as well, I have a very small circle and the, the people I'm friends with are all in the fitness industry who are doing better than me in mm-hmm. terms of, in terms of following. Um, so it's never, it's never crossed my mind once to be like, oh, look, uh, give me this for free. You know, I've got all these followers or blah, blah, blah. It's just, I, I don't like operating like that. Yeah. Under, I understand what you mean. Like, cause it's, it's kind of humbleness yeah. in you, isn't it really? Yeah. Have you ever seen like a, a bad side of your position 
has there has there ever been like a detriment to you like in any way? I don't mean necessarily having a following. I just mean being on social media, people recognizing you, because it will come. Yeah. Like if, if it's not happening now, and I'm no, sure no, no, it it's, is, it's definitely happening now. So so has there ever been a bit actually? Do you know what? Like I don't know if I like this. No, no, I, I love it when people come up to me. It, it, it's like it, it's crazy for me to think I went to a Gymshark event in um, in April and hundreds of people came up to me yeah. asking for photos, chatting to me, and I was completely blown I'll send away. You that. Yeah, yeah, just, just yeah, oh yeah, yeah you were there, there, you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like just by posting a few TikToks, how people can feel like they know you and. You know, if your if your TikToks are a minute, two minutes long, and they're watching that every single day, they're going to feel like they have a connection with you. I think that's the that's yeah. another important thing. So these people will come up to me and chat to me and like, oh, I love this video. I love what you did here. This, blah, blah. And and that is a great feeling. The only like downside to social media is obviously the the hates comments, right? That's what everyone says. But I'm fortunate where I don't actually get too much hate because of the type of content I do. Right? It's all funny. It's all lighthearted. It's not too. It's not too serious. It's not. I don't put anything out there that could invoke a lot of hate in, in the first place has there been anything what's actually knocked you back a bit where you've been like fucking hell mate that's a bit not not off the top of my head the, the only thing that gets me down in in this industry is seeing the success of other people like, I, I i always want more it's like it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time it's like angel and devil so it gives me the fire to want more but also because i'm not there yet it, it makes me feel like i'm not achieving if that makes sense yeah, it's mad that I think that I think if you have an experience where it's quite buttery mm. and it's quite plain sailing, not that there's no work put into it, but if if you have that experience, I think that'll actually peer into your personality. Like people see that. Whereas if you're constantly bogged down with bad shit, if you were, how do you think you'd react? Do you think you're the type of guy who would let it affect where you go on the tra- whole trajectory of Will Bailey online, or do you think actually, do you know what? I'm gonna post more fucking content. I'm gonna get in the faces more. How are you like that? Yeah, it it, it would again. I'd I'd fuel to the fire. I think. Um you know, there's the saying that the people that give you hate, they're, they're always in a worse position than you. Like, they're, they're just jealous for some reason. So it, it, it would it would um, spur me to, to go on and, and post more and like, rub it in their face even more that I'm, I'm doing this and, and, they're not, and they're not there. Yeah, I agree. I think I'd be the same, like, yeah. to be fair. I it's, think it's, I've been very lucky online. Yeah. I've, I've had no... It's, it's, it's motivation, yeah. I have kind of negative, which has been... Yeah. Fucking, I must be doing something right mm. in, in some way. I'm either... Me production with me wonderful camera guy yeah. is amazing, or I've got Canny Chat, yeah. which is probably the production guy. <laughs> um, but mate, that's the thing. I want to ask a question which I think a lot of people will ask, right? Or will certainly think whether they address it or not. Someone like you who's in unbelievable nick, right? How does he manage to put out this much content, have the lifestyle he's got? Surely he can't be training that hard because I've knocked around with a lot of bodybuilders and I know the work that goes into it. So I, I know better. But yeah. for the people who don't see that, how hard do you train? How hard do I train? I do train very hard, right? And and the thing is that a lot of people don't understand with this with this line of work, if you want to call it that, is that it's it's by no means a full time job, but it is a part time job every single day. Like there is no days off. You're you're posting every day, you're traveling every day. So yes, it is hard to train sometimes, but but the training intensity is always there. Like I, I have to, because my body is my brand at the end of the day. If I'm not training hard, if I'm not eating the right things and I get fat or I get skinny, I lose the whole Will Bailey persona, right? So it, it is difficult because you see, you travel all the time, I travel all the time. It is hard to, to get the sessions in to eat right, but um, you, you just have to get it done. You just, ha- you have to find the time. I quite like that. It's like, a, it's not a full-time job, it's a part-time job every day. It's yeah, quite nice, it that man. You said there, it was interesting. You said Will Bailey persona. Mm. I mean, am I getting the real Will Bailey now or am I yeah. getting the persona on TikTok? No, no, 100%. The, the persona on TikTok is just me cranked up a few notches to sort of not overacting, but you just you just hype your personality up a bit for the, for the camera. So, you know, you, you crack a load of jokes, you, you say a few things to make people laugh. and But you also, at the same time, I'm... I'm working out at the same time. I'm I'm giving that sort of information as to what I'm doing as well as as well as the funny side. Do you know what's funny? Obviously, rugby. Obviously, you went to a rugby school, didn't yeah. you? And a lot of people who've played rugby, been around them type of guys, a lot of them are confident as out. For you, when you're creating content, because I've seen your content when you're asking people things, because I've did, I've did very similar things in, in some of the content I've put out and stuff, and it's like there's an element with me where I'm like, do you know what? Like, I'm just having fun with this. So I don't really give a shit. Mm. It's all lighthearted. Like, I'm I, I'm like that in me personality yeah. anyway. But at the same time, I know there's a serious element to it, and there's sometimes in scenarios whether I'm in Dubai or wherever wherever I am filming content, I know that actually there's going to be a perception of who I am and is this guy beggy and trying to just grow or is this guy genuine and he's a sound lad with you when you go into create content with people, whether it's at a Gymshark event, wherever it is. Do you ever feel a bit like embarrassed or a bit like, shit, I've got to perform here? At this point, no. 
because people know what to expect from me. So I can just literally be myself, how I am on social media, and, and that's what pe that's how, who, how people know me for being a bit loud, funny, uh, a little bit clumsy, you know, um, a bit of a joker, but but with the, with the serious edge. Definitely, if it, if you put me in that situation when I was just starting, I would have been terrified. Like I would have I would have hated every moment, but um, I, I just sort of embrace it now and just like I said, if if people know what to expect from me, I know what to give them. So it, it, it makes it easier for me. How's Will Bailey when he's not on camera? He is probably sat in his bedroom at his desk doing a ridiculous amount of editing and, and work and check-ins with clients and all that sort of stuff. It's just, just very sort of, probably not what most people would expect. Very quiet, very focused, very organized, just, yeah. You're an online coach as well, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Was that something that you had to like sort of go alongside your content or was that something that, that is, you know, you want to be known as the coach guy mm. or do you want to be known as the guy who's just funny as out on social media and just has a shitload of fun? Yeah, that's that's a, a question I ask myself quite a lot as well. So obviously my, my coaching business is by far the my biggest income. So that's where a lot of my focus should be. But, you know, without the content, the, the business, the coaching business wouldn't be there. So it's, um, it's like spinning two plates at once. Um, and yeah, get, getting into all that, I, so when I left university, I, I sort of sat down with my dad and he was very like, you know, I did a politics and economics degree. He was like, you know, go to London. I've got you this job lined up, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, look, like I'm, I'm starting to post these videos. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm getting enjoyment out of. So he, I think I graduated in June or July and he said, right, do all your content, fitness stuff. Cause he doesn't really understand by the, do it till December, do it till Christmas, see how you get on. And then we'll go from there. Um, absolutely smashed it the, the, the life and soul of it I was posting every single day grew as much as I could because the pressure was on you right? pressure was on me and, and I was coaching at that point as well so I was, I was growing my coaching business every single month more and more clients um the sponsors were coming in the, the one-off paid ads were coming and all that sort of stuff and I was showing him these invoices and he was like right okay I'm happy you can you can continue I was like Whew, Mate, it's funny that you know because when you said that there I'd love to have been a fly on the wall yeah. like like you and imagine you just coming in like and your dad's like look I want you to go and pursue politics in London you're like dad I'm gonna there, like I'm gonna create some videos, like, yeah. and he's like, "You fucking what?" They just don't understand. Like, just parents just don't understand. Yeah, a, a how, why people are making all these videos, and B the money you can earn yeah. from social media is astronomical. It's it's ridiculous. If you told me I was a year ago, I was be earning the money that I'm earning now, even with Gymshark living this life I'm living now, I would have laughed in your face. Can you, can you remember a kind of turning point at all, or is there a particular video that you did that? blew up and where you, where you gained a big load, like a lot of followers or was it literally a gradual process? There, there was a big video I did on TikTok which got me a lot of clients for my business which obviously really helped with the whole income financial side of it and making sure my dad was happy. Um, it was a video about how I you just it was like a skit like just broken up with your girlfriend and I need a workout plan and all this sort of stuff. I think it got like four million views. Um, had it like over a thousand people inquire to the coaching so obviously got a good few number of signups from that. Um, so that's when, when the coaching aspect really took off. And then that obviously led to a lot of followers on TikTok as well. And then I just, I just rode that wave for as long as I could. Yeah. Of and it's just, it's just upward trajectory since then. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That like, so people actually inquire through the, the humorous style videos yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. I think that's the thing, mate. People don't understand it. I know for me, like obviously with the content PT, I ultimately create content for fitness brands, businesses, online coaches, PTs, all that good stuff. Obviously you know this, but people don't understand when I'm doing a podcast thing, well, why is he doing a podcast? Surely, because it, it, there's no ROI in a podcast. Yeah. However, people get to understand me as a person. They understand what I do, mm -hmm. who I'm connected to. And then off the back of that, they start booking in. So I understand exactly why you yeah. would do that. But from a parent's perspective, I think it'd be very hard. Like, well, Will, unless you're making money, mate, this yeah. is not worth yeah. it. It's just alien to them. Do you know what I mean? How do you, do you constantly think this could all go away tomorrow? If you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches, and fitness brands all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media, or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. Every single day, that's like my, that's like my worst fear. Um, waking up and maybe the TikTok account gets deleted, or for some reason, all my clients just wake up one morning and all of them decide to leave and it, it leaves me with completely nothing. Like that's what I'm actually absolutely, absolutely petrified of. But on the flip side, I know if I'm doing everything I need to do and more, if I'm posting, if I'm if I'm getting back to my clients, if I'm providing value, if I'm providing entertainment, there's no reason for that to happen. That's that's well understood that I, I get that. How do you come up with your content ideas then? 
so a lot of people will sit down and plan out what they're going to film and do for days, weeks, months ahead. I am a very spare of the moment kind of guy. And now I'm into sort of the rhythm where I know what works and what doesn't work for me, for me particularly. So I do a lot of these mic'd up gym, gym yeah. content videos that you've probably seen. And, and they do well for me. Like people, people engage well with me, the one minute, two minute videos. Um, there'll be a few things I plan. I, I plan more Instagram than TikTok. TikTok is more spare of the moment um, to keep it natural. But Instagram, you know, you're posting your reels. It has to be more aesthetic, all this sort of stuff. So that's that's the planning goes into Instagram, not not into not into TikTok. Is there any videos that have absolutely flopped and you've been like, fucking hell, I need to oh, delete yeah. that? Loads, loads, absolutely. Do you loads. ever delete videos? Um, not so much anymore. I used to be bad for it. If if on TikTok it didn't get over, you know, ten thousand mm -hmm. views, I would be like, oh, that was terrible. Like hide it or Instagram if it was like if it should have got a thousand likes and it got 600, I'd be like, oh, that was terrible, get rid of it. Just out of curiosity, right? So I've noticed this has happened to me a few times. So I've had videos on TikTok that I've did like a couple of million views. Mm. And then I've done I've videos that I've had literally like 700 views. I've been like, fuck that. So mate, you know what I've done? I've deleted yeah. it and banged it out again like two weeks yeah. later. But it still hits the same view. So does TikTok recognize that the video has already been posted or is it actually a shit video and no, no, there's it, no interest? It, it does recognize. So when you... It's so clever. It, it recognizes where you've posted the video from. So if you make, so TikTok have a, a relationship with CapCut, which is an editing yep. software. So TikTok knows that if you post, if you edit a video on CapCut and post it to TikTok, they'll they'll push that video. If you edit it on a rival platform, they'll also know that and they'll not push that. Um, similarly, if you post the exact same video, they'll know that and they will definitely not push the push the second one unless you make a, a slight tweak. If you shorten a clip or put something extra in, it has to be a bit different. Is that why TikTok will stamp their videos in case you use them on the other platforms? Yes. Is yeah. that the actual yeah, reason? Yeah, like the watermark, yeah. Yeah, that's, mate, that's the little gem for people actually mm. to know. How did you find your niche? To be honest, I still don't know if I have found it. A lot of people associate me with with certain things, um, in particular, so I, I've got big chest, right? So I can move ridiculous weight on on a on a chest press, you know, seventy kilo dumbbell. So when, it, especially yeah, yeah, recently, a lot of people have been coming up to me and go, "Yeah, you're you're off TikTok. You do the seventy kilo dumbbells." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." Did a video with the side men recently, so I've been having a lot of recognition for that. Yeah. Um. Also did a like a maybe not a series, but I had a period of time where I was doing a lot of these TikTok mic'd ups with different girls. Yeah. Um. All the videos did did so well. People just love that connection between the opposite sex. I think and um. So I became sort of known on TikTok for the, the like the the coach with Riz or the the guy in yeah, the gym that yeah. has Riz, all that sort of stuff. Which I sort of wanted to branch away from a little bit. I didn't want to be known as that, but at the same time, it was getting me the views, it was getting me the the likes, the followers, and the and the clients as well. So it's it was finding the balance. Sponsorships, Will. Um, obviously, you're sponsored by Gymshark now. Yeah. Have you had to turn any away? Has there been any kind of scenarios before in the past where you've been like, we don't have to mention the brands, yeah. but has there ever been sponsorships where like you've been like, actually, do you know what? I would love to go with them, but they actually want more from me. And the reason I ask you this, um, I was sponsored by, um, again, I'm not going to say the name because I'm no longer with them now, but it started off, the deal was absolutely brilliant. Um, and I was getting exactly what I wanted. The money was great. The, the extras were great. And then it got to say three or four months in, and they wanted more content in return for that, and then more. But the negotiation was getting less and less. And I was like, actually, now they're going to have me over a barrel here, yeah. which is a full-time fucking job now. Yeah. So I actually had to leave that situation, which is, again, it's kind of like bittersweet because it was, you know, I liked the perks and everything I got with that. Mm. But at the same time, I didn't want the demand because it takes away from my business. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, ca countless times. Has um, so so I, I'm actually with an agency now, so they deal with a lot of the negotiation. But before that, it was... It was yeah ridiculous. People, or sorry, not people. Companies would offer um, either they would offer obscene amounts of money for ridiculous amounts of content or stupid types of content, which I would just not ever think about posting because it would ruin me, ruin my reputation, my brand, everything that I've built. Or they Look would offer, serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or they would offer you know next to nothing for a ridiculous amount of content as well. So yeah, I've, I've turned, I've definitely turned away more than I've accepted. So that's, you're still doing sure. OnlyFans and that? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's mad, mate. So what I do want to get into, mate, I want to get into Gymshark because I yep. think ultimately, mate, for me, it's a brand that I've always bought into. Mm -hmm. um, I've met Ben a few times yeah. and, and I know most people who I know who have been sponsored or worked with them in some capacity have been brilliant people. Um, again, you're one of them. This is not me blowing smoke. You're a lovely lad. Um, so how did that situation come about? Because again, I know for a fact a lot of young lads would be like, in fact, he's one for you. So I have a client, right, who said to me the other day, he dropped us a message, he went, Ads, do you need brands I can get in with? And I went, 
well, what's the reason? He went, well, I just want to, I'm like, what's the reason you want to get on with a brand? He was under the impression that a brand will, I went, no, but at this moment, you will have to offer the brand more than they'll be offering you because you're not big enough. Seriously, that is ultimately yeah, the crack. Yeah. So you're going to end up being bent over backwards, doing a shitload of work, even if that, I mean, that deal probably would never happen right now, but if it did, it's, it's going to be unfavorable. With you, how did the whole Gymshark sponsorship come around? So, so because all my friends are in the fitness industry anyway, that sort of gave me a, a leg up. Um, you know, all these guys, like I said earlier, they, they were getting the sponsorships a lot earlier before me. So majority of them were already with Gymshark at this point. So but by me hanging around them and, and making sure my, I was known, it obviously helped me quite a lot. But then on the flip side, also buying the products off my own accord, posting them, making content about them, um, tagging them is, is ultimately what they want to see. And then, yeah, I think it was in, in April, they, they sent me the message and say, look, like we want to get you on the team and, and b- build a relationship. How did you feel on that one? Yeah, I was, I was super gassed. That so was, ultimately, that's, that's the goal, isn't it, right? Like Gymshark, like probably the arguably the... Yeah, oh yeah, big, I mean? biggest fitness brand for sure. Um, yeah, it's everybody, every young gym rat in the UK wants to be with Gymshark, right? That's, that's like the gym, dream brand. Um, but yeah, so, so I got to the point where I knew that it was, it was going to come. I just had to be consistent with it. At one point it was a dream. And then because I knew I was putting in the work, I was posting the videos, I was getting the exposure. It was just a matter of time and, until it happened. And the real, the real thing that, that got me, so I, I got the Gymshark deal, blah, blah, blah. I went down to um, Gymshark HQ to, yeah. to film my sort of announcement video. And, and I met Matt Just Fitness there. I, I'd, I'd met him a few times. So we were just having a chat. He was like, oh, congrats for coming on, blah, blah. So, okay, good. And then um, a few weeks later, I saw that he'd actually followed me on Instagram. Yeah. And now because he was such a, a big part of, I remember me, you saying that the yeah, start yeah, of videos exactly. when you started YouTube. A big part of me getting into it, um, it, it made me cry. Like that, really? Him following me got me more emotional than me actually signing with Gymshark. I was like, wow, like that's... That's meant from, that, from, from him being the reason to get me into fitness to now follow me on Instagram and having conversations on Instagram is like nuts. It's mad. Yeah. Part, I mean, part of us wants to call you an absolute massive Jesse for crying. <laughs> yeah. Matt does fitness. But at the same time, yeah, I do yeah. I do understand what you yeah. mean. Like, it's like when you meet, it's like an idol, mm. isn't it? Really, yeah, ultimately, yeah, yeah. it's like... He's put you on that trajectory yeah, in a yeah. way, the inspiration. When you signed with Gymshark, did it feel how you thought it would? Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah. it's it's such a good brand to work for. They're they're so on it with everything from from products to um, social media to to the events, literally everything. Ben is such a genius. Like he just has the brand on lockdown. Everyone that works for Gymshark is in like it's they they have such a good team. I've worked with other brands where the uh, we mentioned before we won't, won't mention the name but um the team was just terrible like mm-hmm. the events were bad the the staff aren't just aren't enthusiastic about the brand but everyone at gymshark wants to be at gymshark yeah, which which it. what makes it such a great and brand. i think that the, the 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 pioneers as well and they've got like a new way of thinking mm. and i think that like the direction where they want to go and they it's be a visionary isn't it that's their thing yeah. so it's like ultimately people like you adopt their th- the way of thinking anyway so yeah. you, your ethos will probably align anyway mm-hmm. i think that's ultimately the brands you want to be with you're yeah. far better off going with a smaller brand who sort of aligned with your values than anything else Again, without going into detail, Will, for a lot of young lads who would love to be with Gymshark or anything like that, when you sign with a brand, I know, I know it's going to be sort of case per case, but what does it look like when you are officially sponsored? Like, what do you have to do? Yeah, so most of these contracts are all based on deliverables. So by deliverables, I mean like, um, you know, they might want you to post two Instagram posts a week, uh, uh, sorry, a month, uh, a few TikToks, a few stories, um, in some contracts, it might be like a modeling shoot every X, however long. Um, and then that, that, that's, the, that's the sort of thing you negotiate, obviously, as well as the price. You, you work out how much um, one Instagram post should, should cost you, that kind of thing. Um, and that's what most of the contracts are, are, are based upon. And then you obviously get your, your sale code and your commission on top of that with how many sales you can make. And it's good. It is a good, um, a good like, streamlined process. Did you want to negotiate with Gymshark or not? I, I would have done it for free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was gonna at, say, at, I at that point, I would have done it for free because it was like, it was the dream at that point. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, I'm getting to a, how to say it, better position in the better, bigger status. Yeah. Um, obviously, the following is growing. So now I've got more power to, to negotiate and, and all that sort of stuff. Are you crying? Am I crying? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Philip, I'm talking about Jim's talking about. No, no, no. No, that's mad, that yeah. bit. Is there, do you think that's where you kind of want to be like with this brand now going forward or do you, are you, again, not 
it's not something you're going to tell Jim, Jones, yeah. of course, but like, are you always, I'm looking for the next thing, I'm looking for the next thing, or is it a case of, no, I'm happy where I'm at now and this is going to facilitate my growth, or do you want to try and just keep climbing and it doesn't matter who you go with? Yeah, this this, this is my biggest problem. I'm, I'm never happy with where I am, whether it's my physique, whether it's my um, following, how much I'm earning. Like, the, the, the thing I always say to myself is I'm proud of where I am, but I, I never, ever am I satisfied. I always want more. So whether it is I want more with Gymshark, I want more clients, I want more followers, more, more likes, whatever it is, there's there's a constant fire and I, I just want more. That's that's my problem. And it, like I said, it, it's a good and bad thing. Mikey always says to me, he says, uh, always act like you're second best and I love that, you know. I think that's class. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's that's right, isn't it? Like yeah, you yeah, never yeah, want to yeah, think yeah. you're at the top. Yeah, no, never. As much as you might want to put it out there like I'm yeah. the best in the North East yeah. or I'm best in the UK, whatever, you also have to have the mindset have to be act grounded. that way. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? I think... For the social media journey and everything you've kind of did, been through, going on to do, we talked about getting in shape and how hard you train with intensity and stuff. What is your diet actually like as well? Because again, like you're on the road, you're traveling, you're doing your vlogs in Greece, you're all over the world, you're up and down to Gymshark HQ yeah. and all that. How do you, do you, is it literally, I just meal prep, mate? Do you know what? I'm, I'm terrible for meal prepping. Where, where I am on the move so much, I don't meal prep at all, if, I, if I'm being completely honest. I just, I know, obviously I've got, I've been training for eight years, right? I, I know what I should and shouldn't be eating. I, I track everything on my fitness pal, so I, I know what I'm eating each day. And as long as I'm, my biggest thing is, especially if I'm on the move, calories and protein, like that's the two main thing. When I'm at home and it's a bit more relaxed, then I can really nail it and get all the cardio in, train properly. Um, but yeah, I, I've just got a good understanding now of, of what I should and, and shouldn't be eating. Do you think, do a lot of clients who you work with come to you for diet or do you actually find that a lot of clients come with you, come to you because they want to be like you in terms of social media no they, they definitely come to me in terms of wanting to change their physique there's obviously a few people that you know see what I do and that they want to start their own journey and of course you know if they sign up I'll, I'll give them all the advice I can um but yeah it's it, it's very much they come to me because because they're just not happy with the way they look and they they it's not so much they don't know what to do it's that they need that accountability and that's what I'm ultimately there for, to, to tell them what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. The reason I asked that, mate, I, I had a lot, he's actually been on the podcast, he, he's a good mate of mine, to be fair, um, but he's like, he's massive in the fat, fashion industry, and um, he's also an online coach, he's kind of been through that journey, and he, he kind of started it back up, so he was getting all these Zoom calls and stuff, and getting, like, he was going through the consultation process and stuff, and uh, when he was on board and clients, they were actually like, mate, like, I'm going out on a date on Friday, like, do you think this shit? Yeah, like, yeah. and, he, and he found himself, he was like, I was like, well, did you do it? Like, he was like, well, I made the me clients. But yeah. I was like, can you do that? Like, do you get any dodgy requests off people? Yeah. Do you? A lot, yeah. Can yeah. you share them? Um, I've had a lot of instances where, so I've had clients sign up, to, female clients mm -hmm. sign up to, this, this, is, this is the problem. Female clients who, <laughs> they've, they've signed up to the, to the app with, the sole purpose is not to um, change their physique. It's to have more one-to-one -one time with me, essentially. Mm -hmm. And whether that's through, you know, nude photos mm -hmm. or you know, explicit images, dirty texts, how, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, that that it's not so much a problem anymore because I've I've learned how to deal with that. But there was a, <laughs> there was a point where it was like ridiculous. <laughs> so how do you react to that? I, I, complete shock. Like they're pay, they're paying me this money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To change their physique and do it and they, and they completely disregard what they're paying me and they're <laughs> just sending me are you, are you single I'm, I'm single are you single? Dating, so, single you didn't but you're single yeah. like that's what I'm saying like someone in your position again right here's a question for the young lads growing up cause I remember when I was 17, 18, 19, 20 and I was single and I was you know doing what I was doing yeah. I, I would have killed to be in a position where I had 26,000 followers and all the birds were in me DMs it yeah. would have been class mate that's not yeah, would have yeah. been good fun however what I will say is do you get much of that? Like, does that happen when you amass a following? Do you get a lot of people who whip into your DMs and use it like they would use Tinder? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. That, that, yeah, I'm not going to deny it. it. It does happen a lot. And especially the, the type of content I post r resonates a lot with, with women as, as well as guys. So, which is why I have, I have a, on Instagram and TikTok, a 50-50 split yeah. between male and female following. So, yeah, it, it does happen a lot more than I would like to admit. But, um thing is with me, like, I just, I just do not entertain it. I've been out of the dating game for so long, literally doing content and, you know, I, until recently, I haven't been going on dates at all. I was, mm -hmm. once I left university, I was so focused on videos and content and gym and I, I didn't want a girlfriend. I had no sex drive at all. 
Um, it was just through the floor. It was the last thing on my mind. It was it was content, content, so you, content. So you never said no to someone who's whipped in your DMs. I've never said no. You never. So you you've never always, entertained. No, you never no, entertained. No, 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 no. no. And and some beautiful girls I've messaged. Yeah. I'm not going to deny it. And I just I, there's there's a part of me that wanted to say yes, but I also knew it was just going to take away from what I was already doing. Yeah, and and it's not the platform for yeah. that ultimately, yeah, yeah. is it? Let's let's be serious here. Yeah. And I mean, with you going forward, obviously with that type of thing in mind. Do you try and keep your dating life separate? Like, how would you feel if so? Would you rather a girl who, the best way to put, yeah. Would you rather a girl, right, who didn't know who you was, who you were, sorry. Yeah. Or would you, because I'm sure that'll happen as well. Yeah. Like, people will be like, they'd probably pretend they don't know who you are. Have you had that as yeah, well? Yeah, I know, yeah, I, yeah. I know I've got yeah. quite a few friends who've got millions of yeah, followers yeah. and they get that a lot. Yeah. So they'll go on dates and it's like, I didn't know you were on Instagram. Yeah. It's like, how did you know? Well, so... I've, like I said, I've not been dating at all until the last few weeks. I've been seeing this one person. Um, and the, the, the thing is, I, I always said to my friends as well, they're like, like why, why, are you not, why are you so disinterested in girls? Like, why do you not care? I was like, unless they come into my life and they completely understand what I do, ideally do what I do, are obviously beautiful, have all these traits, like, I'm just not interested at all. I'm now dating this girl who is, seems to be ticking all these boxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she, she knew who I was. We, we obviously connected through social media, but... Um, yeah, it's just like if they, they have to understand it, because because I've I've seen girls in I've seen girls like I've been on the what the occasional date and they they love the idea of the lifestyle, but the reality of it is is that it's a lot of time at a desk, it's sitting down, it's filming, it's editing, it's doing this, it's calls, yeah, it's yeah, it's, calls. A, it's a it, majority of it is a boring life, and if they can't accept that, I can't give my full attention to them, it's 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 never gonna work. And I suppose as well, they've got to deal with their own insecurities and as in jealousy and stuff because you're yeah. going you are a profile yeah. you're going to get approached yeah, by other people you're going to get noticed and not yeah. everyone's going to be able to handle that with you you were saying they've got to tick all those boxes so you would rather be with a girl who had a following instagram or would you rather like do you know what i mean or, no, or just understood it yeah not Is that what you they, mean? they wouldn't have to have a following but just ideally in the same industry so so the girl i'm seeing at the moment is in the same industry yeah. so so she completely gets it like she she posts on instagram she does tiktok she does all the same things she's coaching um so she gets it she understands the grind the hustle the the time it takes the effort you have to put in whereas a girl who has a uh, i don't know works across the coffee wouldn't would never understand yeah, that's mad. That because yeah. you were, you were once there, and then exactly. now you would think that they don't understand. Yeah, that you yeah, had to, yeah. It's crazy, that isn't mm. it, mate? That's mm. fucking mad. It's it's, it's mental, mate. I, I love the journey that you've been on, mate. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Would you recommend someone get into social media if they were in a normal job mm -hmm. and they enjoyed the job? They, they they weren't too bothered about it. They had an all right wage. Yeah. Would you say, look, you need to maybe just open your eyes, get into it because there's a big world out there and you can make a lot of money? Or would you say, actually, do you know what? This could really knock you. It might not be for you. I've I've got a good answer to this. So, like like I said before the podcast, I've been listening to a lot of Alex Holmosey, and he um, always talks about life being you know the journey and then and then the destination. But he's got quite a, a pessimistic view of the destination, and that and that's death. Yeah. Right. So everybody wants to get to the destination, not realizing the destination is death. So if you if you are not if you can't learn to love the journey, if you're not loving the journey. What's the What's point? The point? Yeah, yeah. If you, you don't want to be doing a job you hate, you don't want to be in a relationship you, you hate, you, you have to learn to enjoy the journey because, because the destination is ultimately death. So you have to live a fulfilled life, a good life, one that makes you happy, one that makes you excited, um, one that challenges you, of course, but you know where you can, where you can succeed. I think that's the thing. He also says if you zoom out far enough, it doesn't matter exactly. anywhere, doesn't he? Yeah. Stuff like that. It's, it's a spec. Did you say that thing about, actually, a bit of a tangent, but did you say that when he's like, um, look at when the Queen passed away? Yeah, and he was like, yeah. no one remembered anywhere, yeah. like or whatever in, in the yeah, next yeah, yeah. year or something. Yeah. No one's gonna remember that day, mm -hmm. and 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 it's so true. I think that I agree with you one hundred percent wholeheartedly on yeah. that because again, with a little bit like what I do, I kind of th there's no you know it could all end tomorrow. If mm -hmm. if my clients drop off and they don't want me to create content for them, exactly, I'm fucked. But at the same time, I understand where the trajectory of the world's going, kind of where social media is going. I mm -hmm. think I'll be pretty safe, yeah, um, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing. But it's consistency. Do you ever feel like motivation drops off with what you do? Every day. So, yeah. Every single day. Um, th and this is another thing I, I hammer home to my clients as well. It, you, if, if you relied solely on motivation to get you from A to B, you would never get there. It's consistency that gets you there. Um, so yeah, the, like the example I give is that, you know, on, on a good day of my normal routine, I will wake up, I'll come to this gym, I'll do my 500 calories on the Stairmaster, I'll go home, I'll do my check-ins, I will then eat and go to the gym again and film and edit and more check-ins and 
the motivation to do that every single day is rock bottom, I'll be completely honest. But because I'm consistent and because I know it's getting me to closer to where I want to be and because I know that it's rewarding and it's, it's paying the bills and it's growing the following, that's why I do it. Is there any room, you're 23 year old, right? Yeah. Is there any room for alcohol in your life? I'm not a big drinker at all. I didn't actually have my first drink till like 21. Um, right, okay. Again, because I was so focused on fitness, obviously all the, all the Marines and stuff. So I, so I never drank at school, went to house parties, anything like that. Um, so yeah, like I, I now do drink alcohol. And if I if I go away on holiday, I will, I'll have a few drinks, get get smashed, if, if that's what you want to call mm-hmm. it. But um, yeah, definitely it, it's not been a big part of my life at all, at all. And training, how much do you think do you feel like you've got to make sure you hit the gym a certain amount of times or do you just train when you can? Do you put that as a backbone around the content or is the training the main thing? Training is the main thing because a lot of the content is the training. Yeah. So yeah, I'll have my routine where I wake up and I come straight here and then I know sort of two or three o'clock I'll go to uh, the, the other gym up the road and, yeah. and train there and film there. So um, I have that routine as well and then it's weaving everything else in and around that. Will, um, I want to make sure we get a part two on. So I feel like we need to kind of come to the end there, mate. Yeah. Um, obviously, for anyone who hasn't seen your TikTok, mm-hmm. they've been unfortunate enough to not see your Instagram. <laughs> Where can people find you, mate? Um, and is there anything else you kind of want to leave people with as well, if anything? Yeah, so, so all my socials is, is, is just Will Bailey. Um, I think Instagram has four Ys. TikTok has seven Ys because everything else was taken. Um, anything I want to leave with? Um, just... That, that, that's that's something that, that what we said about the journey and the destination it's it's really resonated with me with me recently and having to tell myself that you know if I am having a bad day like what can I do to change that and ultimately if, if I'm not enjoying the journey I'm, I'm not doing the right thing so I, I have to love the journey because that's that's what life is that's what life's about you have to enjoy the journey Will it's been an absolute pleasure mate thank you man thanks a lot mate cheers mate thank you